Welcome to Bible 360 Colossians. Colossians is split into two clear halves. The first half talks about who Christ is and who Christians are in Christ. And the second half talks about how Christians should live or walking with Christ. The Apostle Paul had never been to the church in Colossae. However, one of the leading members and founders of that church a man named Epaphras, came to Paul while Paul was in prison seeking his guidance. And so Paul writes to encourage the Colossians to keep the faith, their faith in Christ alone, and to correct some of the errors they were dealing with. There were both Jewish and Gentile Christians in that church. Some in the Jewish camp were advocating for adherence to the Torah regulations and worship practices as prerequisites for being part of the church or being Christians. On the other hand, some Gentile members treated the gospel as if it could be fit within a existing Gentile religious system. Jesus was sort of just added on to their pantheon or seen as a bonus or upgrade to their pre-existing religious understanding. Both errors share a mistaken approach to Jesus. They treat Jesus and the gospel as if it's a religious enhancement. The Jewish error was Teaching that it would failure to live according to the Torah meant you were outside God's kingdom. The Gentile error was inserting Jesus into or onto what you already thought or believed about the divine, a little something extra. Paul responds by proclaiming the supremacy of Christ and tying everything back together in Jesus. Paul opens warmly, thrilled to have heard of the congregation's faith and the fruits of their faith. Paul talks up Epaphras and encourages the church to listen to them. He prays that they would grow both in their wisdom and in walking in a manner worthy of the calling they have been received. After all, Paul says, this is a big hairy deal what's happened. You have been transferred from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of light by being included in Jesus. Paul makes it crystal clear that Jesus is not just a spiritual leader or a prophet to be included in the scriptures. Jesus is the center of it all, literally the center of it all. Paul calls Jesus the firstborn, meaning that he's the rightful heir of all that which is the Father's. Indeed, all things were made through Jesus and all things hold together in him. Jesus was fully God and fully in charge of creation. Furthermore, Jesus trailblazed a path to the resurrection, and it's in him and by him alone that both heavenly and earthly things have been reconciled, redeemed, and made right. How? Through the blood of his cross. Speaking of crosses, Paul talks of his suffering. Remember my suffering, but not because I'm whining about it. Rather, I gladly will suffer because God is using it to make me a witness of Jesus' suffering and to reveal the mystery which had been hidden up until this very time. I would pay any price to see that happen because it is so amazing. In fact, because of this gospel, you are in Christ. He is the head of the church, not just one part of the body. We take our lead from him. We owe him our respect and fealty. God originally made Israel his people through circumcision, but now baptism is the new way into God's people. Baptized into Christ, we have been cut off from the sinful world. In fact, we have been buried with Christ. You, you used to be dead in your sins because fleshly desires corrupted and enslaved you. Now, because you have been baptized to, into his death, you are dead to sin. So don't get ensnared by intricate and unforgiving rules or rituals. Likewise, don't fall prey to spirituality that claims to have some sort of wisdom but diminishes Jesus. Rather stay connected to Christ and walk in Him. There are now two clearly distinct ways of living, the old selfish sinful way and the new way in Christ. So we set our mind on things that are above because our future hope comes from our Lord from above. Things that bring sorrow, separation, and death we should get rid of. That includes sexual immorality, jealousy, bitterness, deceit, slander, and rage. Our old allegiances, ethnicity, social standing, or whatever other ways we divided up ourselves no longer matter. Matter. Rather, we find our identity and community in practicing compassion, kindness, patience, forgiveness, and above all, love. We live at peace with God and with one another. And our congregation and our lives are filled with thanksgiving and praise. In fact, we now do everything keeping Christ in mind, and we live to bring His name honor. Paul gives practical advice for those living within the framework of a household. Most of Paul's listeners abided in a household even if they were simply servants. But instead of everything revolving around the Roman patriarch, it now revolved around Christ. Christians lived to honor Jesus, not their household. Paul had no interest in patriarchy. What he wants is faithfulness and honor for Jesus Christ, the new head of the household. So wives should show respect for their husbands. Husbands should not dominate, but rather love their wives. Children should obey their parents, and fathers should not embitter or overly frustrate their children. Servants should work diligently because they're actually working for God. 
Their work is recognized by him and brings him glory. Employers should not just seek their profit, but should be fair and just, recognizing that after all, they are all actually servants of the same Lord. Far from demeaning anyone, Paul is doing the exact opposite. He is saying that no matter how menial or unimportant you may feel, no matter what society thinks of you, you have an opportunity to serve Christ. We owe no one allegiance but our Lord and Him only. Paul says if you're wrong, don't worry, because God can take care of that too. Justice matters, it's just that God's kingdom matters even more, and God can be trusted to work out the details. Paul winds down his letter instructing them to give thanks and to pray that God will open more doors for the gospel. Paul sends greetings to the church from him and other leaders and encourages them to open and share the letter with other congregations as well. Paul wants the Colossians to remember his chains because through them they'll be encouraged that even through suffering the gospel can be shared.